So, how does this make sense? I'm a serial winner. After Boa Vista defeated Porto in a historic Taça de Portugal final, Porto's board couldn't handle the embarrassment and sacked Sergio Conceição. Conte coming in seemed out of the blue. And so did all these transfers. Arigi, Juan Bissaka, and Costas, just to name a few. While at Boa Vista, a lot of business was done too. Musa and Bruno Rodriguez came in as permanent deals for a combined 5 million. That only occurred due to Albert Ellis leaving at the end of his loan, Reggie Cannon moving for 3.7 million to Swansea, added with Awazi and Rossinho leaving for a combined 1.45 million. From then on, it was bargain hunting. Tobias Figueiredo on a free, Daniel Ruiz for 1 million, Hugo for 250k, Eddie Otara for 235k, Vasco Sosa back on loan, only because he refused to sign permanently. Fredrik Dragovic then was brought in for 550k, Ron Yukla materialized on a cheap loan, João Pedro, not this one or that one. How many of you are there? The one from Porto arrived for 350k to back up Nathan. With the Europa League coming up along with the dreaded Winter World Cup year, a big squad was required. The first competitive fixture in the Allianz Cup came up against Mafra. A side with the likes of China, Tarzan, Andre Silva, Dida, and Patrick Vieira. If they had him at home. A simple 2-0 win brought some false confidence. Thanks to us winning the Taça de Portugal last season, that gave us a place in the Portuguese Super Cup. Or as they say it, Super Taça con Didi de Oliveira. Makuta's opener may seem as if the side were in for a great campaign. That was until Rafa decided to show up with not just one, not, not just two. two, but three goals. Through this early period, some signings weren't made yet, such as Rajkovic and João Pedro. That meant the now 41-year-old Rafael Broccoli had to start, and Nathan had to play all of these fixtures. It seemed fine as the Twitch chat derby with Santa Clara opened the league campaign. Several chances appeared, but despite having two expected goals, Santa Clara had a free kick late. What? They'd score again! And somehow won! Absolute injustice! Not much luck came against George Jesus' Estoril, who scored late as well, giving another L to Boa Vista. Afterwards, Famalica was a nil-nil draw, which by this point, Rajkovic arrived. Now to finally rest Nate, João Pedro started his first match versus Braga. But we have a highlight off the rip here. Not like this. Don't start the game like this. Offside. No way! No! What? The red card! You have 10 aggression! Why would you do that? Vettinho would score in the 59th minute, but adding to the misery, three subs were already made. Sebastian Perez, who was a hard-working midfielder, got injured bringing the side down to 9. Then Bruno Rodriguez added to the pain by getting himself sent off. With 8 men on the pitch, who all wanted to go to their apartments, they conceded another to lose 3-0 at home. The final straw was losing to 2nd Division side Barzim in the Allianz Cup 2nd phase. <gasps> For results, could be brought down to several issues. Numerous players joining the team needing time to adapt, some players tried to learn different roles, and losing the team's best player didn't help. Oh yeah, let's mention Gustavo Sawyer, who had 20 goal contributions last campaign. He was on the final year of his deal. Sporting Club de Portugal made an offer, and after the realization that a new contract cannot be afforded, he went on his way to Lisbon. An immediate replacement couldn't be found because the targets conveniently signed new contracts. That is why Uclo was loaned. To help ease some issues, Eduardo Caresma and Jao Resende arrived on loan from the Lisbon clubs just for a nil nil draw with Tandela. No win since an Allianz Cup match in preseason, and that wasn't going to change when the damaged Park bus made its way to Sporting Stadium. Huh. Don't think that was supposed to happen. On deadline day, three signings were made. Vought Foss from Rems for half a mil, and he would be playing as a ball winning midfielder rather than a center back. Speaking of that role, Bovisa's player of last season, Thiago Olori, returned for 500k after refusing to pay what Sporting wanted earlier in the window. Finally, Tyrone Abuehi came in for 110k because the fate had been lost in João Pedro. Did the results improve with all these transfers? Uh, kind of? Let's just not talk about the Tasa de Portugal. Is this some sick joke? To me personally, it's a very dark time. As expected, 3 0 L's to both sides, with goals happening in the first half. I mean, Cruninho believed there was a campaign against Boa Vista, but you can't complain about the bias against your team when you draw Molda 1 1. Granted, Molda somehow defeated Atletico Madrid on the first match day, but that's besides the point. Atletico's manager was, of course, Cruninho's hero, Jose Mourinho. <laughs> He absolutely threw the portal based club into the mud. The other Jose didn't respond well, but the special one would get his way in the reverse fixture. Outside of Europe, the results in the meantime were not fun. En route to defend the Tasa de Portugal, a third division side named Amora, were drawn. A relatively strong side were playing, but the team performed like absolute dog water. You'd think there would be no shot that this team valued at millions would lose to a side not even valued at one. Once again, 
I prefer really not to not to speak. The league results would see Tarzan and Cole lose, along with Jao Rosendi getting four in a 5-2 drumming of Vittorio de Guimaraes. Then appeared Antonio Conte's Porto. I prefer to kill him. I could build this up as some epic encounter. In the Invicta derby, Porto was desperate to get their revenge with an insane looking bunch of players. But Boa Vista just got devoked. Devok Origi with a brace, and Taremi getting a third in the 55th minute resulted in a 3-1 defeat. Porto Monens would add more pain, leaving the club well off the European places, but the remaining Europa League matches included a win versus Molda, and shocking Newcastle with a 1-0 victory. Unfortunately, that wasn't enough to stay in Europe's secondary competition, but now, it's time for a conference league dream in. Just doesn't hit the same. After a winter spent hearing it's coming home for the millionth time, England wouldn't do what the Leonesses did, and instead lost the World Cup final to France thanks to a 94th minute Olivier Giroud winner. Speaking of the greatest player since Pele, despite making a tough match for Benfica, Giroud would get a goal and an assist to hand the Checker kids another poor result in the league. Thankfully, with the schedule becoming less hectic and knocked out of several competitions, the fixture list became manageable. Results in January had their ups and downs, but getting revenge over Santa Clara and Estoril were confidence boosters prior to Braga. Now you haven't heard or seen the name Peter Musa too often today. That's because, at this point of the season, he had two goals. A shadow of his former self from the man who had 30 in all comps last year. His New Year's resolution of actually scoring goals weren't coming into fruition for the entirety of January, but that would soon change. With Abdel Ruiz and Thiago Moraes' goals cancelling each other out, up stepped Peter Musa. Ekovic now booting it up to Moose. No, it goes to the shortest man on the pitch. And he is playing a good give and go with Hamache. And Musa tucks it home. Incredible substitution off the bench. The Cruninho way. <laughs> He'd go on and score against Pax de Ferreira in a 1-1 draw and added a goal versus Tondela. Sporting were up next and they'd get a new manager soon. Well, new new because their latest one, Rui George, seemed awful at his job. Thiago Moraes and Peter Musa would each grab a goal in a 2-0 victory. By March, it'd be the end of him. Sporting, like Porto, sacked a highly respected manager at the end of last season. Jose Cruninho saw this as an opportunity to take a step up, but he didn't even get an interview. March would roll by, Rui George was sent away, and Sporting asked for an interview with a future special one. The interview seemed fantastic, which made the owner of Bovista, Gerard Lopez, a nervous man. He offered a contract, which led to nothing. However, without even realizing, Sporting hired Pedro Martins, and Cruninho would eventually sign a new deal with Bovista. In the Conference League, thankfully, it was a single elimination for the round of 32 and 16. I mentioned 16 because the round of 32 opponents were Servette and they were defeated with relative ease. Galatasaray, on the other hand, have like a lot of potential and I think he was at Roma, was it? And he was, I remember in like FIFA 14 or something. Ooh, speaking of Stefano Okaka, there's a goal from him. Good football here, good football. Morais, let's go! Tiago Morais. Wing back or full back? Oh, Eunice, oh my gosh, that's a good ball. I know he's gonna look for Okaka. Mark the man. We're gonna go for it now. Okay, good ball. Come on, pass it, pass it, pass it to someone. Oh, Nate, what a strike. Come on, Eddie, come on, Eddie. Pass it across. Oh! No cup competitions left. Nevertheless, a Conference League playoff spot was up for grabs with 10 matches left. Resende came up with a big goal versus Family Cow in a 1-0 victory. Vizel were smashed 5-1, while March ended with a fraud Jao Pedro, who was on loan at Gil Vicente, losing 2-0. Despite BTEC Andre Silva scoring, the meme squad of Mafra couldn't handle Thiago Moraes and Vittoria de Gamares were defeated 2-1. That was despite the side being down to 10 men with 60 to go. The late winner arrived from Peter Musa. His scoring form was off the charts and made it seem as if Sporting could get caught for fourth. Maybe that's a little optimistic, especially with Conte's Porto next. <laughs> Incredible, how is Wan-Bissaka crossing that wall too? Can't I'm, I'm too mad to even think of anything funny. Oh, I swear if Rigi scores... How is he getting a hat-trick in 25 minutes? Bitch. How is the... How is Demir out jumping my center back? Oh, and Origi again with four! An embarrassment of a derby that had Porto destined to win the title. The challenge for Bovista wasn't going to end yet with Benfica right after. The plan was to frustrate the Lisbon club and that was working for the longest time. Oh gosh. Come on, no, 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 no. <gasps> Never mind. The good thing was that Benfica was ahead of Porto. However, they played Sporting and drew nil-nil, giving Antonio Conte a chance to surpass them. All that was needed was for wins across the board, but against Belenenche, 
A sad version. They blew it with a nil-nil draw. Benfica will go on to win the championship again, while Chelsea supporters on Twitter began the clowning of Conte. Meanwhile, Bovista finished in fifth, and nothing would go wrong for Cruninho. I prefer really not to um, not to speak, not to speak, not to speak, not to speak. This won't be forgotten. Despite the challenges from the board, the elimination from all cup competitions, including the embarrassment in the Tasha de Portugal again, the third season for Cruninho was fantastic. Undefeated eight match days in, including seven clean sheets, everything was going Boa Vista's way, and the opposite would be true with City rivals. Porto were a disaster, and despite a successful time in the cup so far, Conte's men were well off it. Antonio was beginning to go bold for a second time as team celebrated successful result after successful result. He already got sacked by Spurs, and on a chill November 13th, Conte will be sacked in, in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> on paper, they have the best team in Portugal, so with a job available, Cruninho decided to toss in an application. Of course, applying for the job would be controversial, but there'd be no way Porto were going to conduct an interview. Well, there's no way they'd want to hire a city rival who defeated them in a cup final a year and a half prior. Ashenet! Normally, I like to stay with a club for an entire stint. If I was the manager, rejecting this would be simple. However, this is Jose Cruninho's story. A man with no loyalties, and a guy who has Mourinho's posters plastered across his walls. Of course he joined Porto. He's got the ambition to win a Champions League title within 8 seasons to match the ambition of his idol. Yeah, he might piss off a loyal fan base who absolutely adored him. He might need to hire some security, but the game is the game. What game? I am Jose Mourinho. 